every time I look at him and when I, when I see it, it is, uh, I, I don't know, it, it, it blows me away. I look at him and I say, wow. Music is everything for 10-year-old Ariel Lanyi, a child prodigy from Israel. Ariel is more than just a pianist. He's a composer, too. Well, this could be an intro, and then there could be a, a totally well, different... This was there before? Yeah. No, that's what I want to write now. No, first of all, I want to jot down the intro. OK. Before we start anything, but didn't you have a subject? You had a subject. I'm not going to do my opus eight, opus nine, and opus ten. So I'm going to work on opus six, opus seven. I don't have to do so. Then I'll work on opus eight, then on opus nine, and then on opus ten. His achievements are beyond, far, far beyond, of any most gifted child that I've known. The question was, why do you take criticism from your teachers and not from your parents? And not from your mother. And not from your father either. <laughs> well, because my teachers are, are, are way smarter. <laughs> and that's nice. That's nice. Parents Gabby and <laughs> Olga have raised their son in a home dominated by music. Ariel was destined to be a pianist right from the off. We were negotiating for a piano when, uh, when Olga was pregnant with uh, Ariel. And she said, well, why, why are you so anxious about it? What's the big deal? He's not going to come back home from a hospital and, and start taking piano lessons. And I said, no, but I don't want to bring a child back from the hospital into a home that doesn't have a piano. Neither Gabby nor Olga could play the piano. It was for one person only, their newborn child. When he was born, he started uh, listening to music right from the beginning because there was a tape that his father prepared for the occasion. And from then on, he was listening to music almost 24 hours a day. There is a theory that um, very young children can be taught anything. They don't have to be born that way. But the earlier you start the education, the more you'll be able to achieve. It soon became apparent that the theory was working. It was less than three, just a little less than three, and, and we were driving in a car, and he was sitting in the back, and we were listening to the radio, and it was Beethoven's second piano concerto, which I recognized, but I, I, don't, I don't know the key, and I didn't have the CD, so I told him this is a piano concerto by Beethoven. And I said, Ian, and I didn't have the answer because uh, I didn't have the CD to look at, right? And obviously I cannot tell. So he says, in B flat major. And I looked in the mirror and I said, are you sure? And he said, oh yeah. So needless to say, as soon as we got home, I take out the CD and I look at it, and it's in B flat major. By five, Ariel had already taught himself to play the piano and started taking lessons. By seven, he was playing classical concerts with an orchestra of adults. In a way, we created it to some degree by exposing him early on. And a little baby uh, doesn't have many choices, so he just lies on his back and you play Bach and you play Bartok and uh, he listens. Ariel is now firmly on the path for a life of music. But although showing a talent way beyond his years, he's wary of being labeled. I don't like the meaning of child prodigy. Because child prodigy is basically someone who can play fast. And not more than that. Not understanding music, just playing fast. And how are you different? Because I understand the music, I analyze. I... Are you a pianist or a musician? A musician. And are you a genius? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I will be one day, but not yet. In Israel, it's 9 p.m. on a Thursday night, and 10-year-old musician Ariel Lanyi has a gig. At the tender age of seven, he branched out onto the jazz scene.
this gig is supposed to start at 9.30, which it probably won't, so it'll start closer to 10. It'll probably go until about 11, 11.30. By the time he's gonna get home, it'll be midnight. That's obviously not a good thing. But if a kid plays jazz, uh, and if he wants to have an audience, he can get an audience at 4 p.m. Thank you very much. This is Uncle Jones. This is Ariel. <laughs> But can a child of 10 handle the strain of such a late night gig? between what is this child going to give to the world as he grows up and what is he going to sacrifice as a human being. As the set continues, the late night starts to take its toll. Ariel decides to persevere. It's now 10.30 p.m. How did I play? I could, I could do better. You know, I was very tired. We're going out to improve. You're going out to improve? He's not pleased. I know it flopped. What? I know it flopped. It didn't flop. In exactly six weeks, Ariel makes his European debut at a jazz festival in Italy. Could it be too much too soon? Vicenza, Italy, and 10-year-old musician Ariel Lagny has been invited to make his European debut at a prestigious jazz festival. But he's feeling the pressure. It's a big gig. OK. So right now, what matters is to put a smile on your face, a non-nervous a non smile on your face. This is a real jazz festival with uh, big names, and he is uh, playing alongside known people. So he's very, very nervous. We just uh, hope that he will revive before the concert. Later that evening, an audience of jazz aficionados gathers to watch Ariel and jazz partner Jean-Claude Jones. Do you know it's better? We practiced with the metronome, and uh, we're more together. And we dropped the tune. That's it, you get it? Sono felice di presentare Ariel e Jean-Claude Jones.
Gabby is in the wings throughout. This time, Ariel's a success. Fantastic. I never thought that a little child like him could do something like that. A genius, more than a genius, I think. I was so surprised. How do you say in English? That goosebump? I had a goosebump on my arms. Thank you, Jean-Claude Jones. Good. I'm good. Hey, Gacy, how was it? Hey, man, that was good. Yeah. Was it professional? Good. When a child prodigy stops being a child, then the question is, uh, is he, does he have the wherewithal to be a, a bona fide artist or, uh, or not? And if he doesn't, then uh, he can be a very happy amateur. If he doesn't follow a career in music, he'll probably have to follow a career in something else. <laughs> and it, has, it will have to be his decision, ultimately. It will not be ours.